Returning to the multiverse of Magic the Gathering and the world of Dominaria, it has a rich and very detailed history, most of which is focused very much on powerful spellcasters, arcanists, inventors, and those with the special planner spark that allows them to travel between the parallel dimensions. Very early in this history, the plane of Dominaria was ruled from eight major cities by the Empire of the Thran, originating in the eastern lands of Dominaria and the continent of Terra Sierra, eventually ruling most of it. The Thran people constructed incredible artifact machines, similar in many ways to the ancient sorcerer kings of Amaska on the planet Toril in the Dungeons and Dragons multiverse. But despite a lot of archaeological research, a lot about the Thran Empire is a mystery, since it fell nearly 5,000 years ago. What we do know is the Thran used power stones to fuel their magical machines, and that they were just as focused on perfecting their own bodies as they were at crafting the perfect machines to reshape reality to their will. Well, eventually they started getting sick from overexposure to power stones, and one of the evil mad doctor eugenicists named York Moth used societal politics and prejudice to incite riots and unrest, increased his power and influence, and eventually took control of the whole empire. It was the appearance of a human planeswalker, a person with the ability to innately teleport themselves and others between parallel universes, that led to the inevitable complete corruption of York Moth, as he was shown the world of Phyrexia for the first time by the planeswalker named Dyfed, showing a plane of existence where metal and flesh could meld together in perfect harmony. To a Thran genius genetic artificer? Well, he was instantly obsessed with creating a perfect world for himself as its god. The planeswalkers ultimately have caused all the problems Dominaria has faced over the last 5,000 years, and one of the symptoms of this unchecked planar travel going on is a creature type called the Atog. Nobody seems to know where the Atog species originated, but it must have been either somewhere with a lot of ambient mana and natural resources, or the Atog is just a random mutation of some other species, dramatically altered by the twisted mana of uncontrolled interdimensional transitions. There is even a remote and horrific possibility that these were once captives of Yorgmoth who performed experiments on them. It's hard to say because Yorgmoth used these weapons of mass destruction based on power stone technology called stone charges, which caused horrific mutations in the aftermath of their massive devastation. Atogs are usually humanoid, small, insatiably hungry, and afflicted with really bizarre metabolisms. They come in lots of different shapes and sizes, all oddly recognizable thanks to their characteristic features. Atogs are some kind of a blend of reptile and amphibian with protruding, bulbous, and brightly colored eyes, orange being the color of the common Atog's eyes, bright orange, and their hide is a deep shade of purple, so not exactly stealthy. They're fast, vicious, and unrelenting creatures with small brains. Like very hungry, stupid goblins who have a large head in comparison to the rest of their body just so they can fit an impressive number of very sharp, very hard fangs in their powerful jaws. When the common purple Atog bites, it extends its jaw outward slightly, its lips pulling right back and chomps down as hard as it can, tearing into metal, wood, bone, and flesh with equal ease. They will do things like swarm over a vehicle and chew into the engine to either make it explode or just stop in its tracks and then set about consuming the entire vehicle like a pack of hunting dogs tearing apart a wildebeest. You might be lucky enough to abandon the target of their hunger and avoid getting between those jaws and their food if you are fast and stealthy. The name Atog is a rearrangement of the word goat due to their ability to eat metal, which real goat goats can't do of course. Atogs eat magic items, enchantments, and other sorts of unusual things. The type of Atog it is really hinges on what they eat and the color of mana they are linked to. Planet travel is what caused them to show up in the first place, and now Atogs are spread across many different parallel dimensions in the worlds of those planes of existence. Dominaria has the bulk of their population, but there are unique subspecies also found on other planes. So let's take a look at the variety to choose from, shall we? Most Atogs are scavengers, with the power to gain strength and sustenance through certain substances. The common Atog, with orange eyes and purple skin, will feed on artifacts and various metals, so they prefer to dwell near civilizations and cities, where they are considered dangerous vermin by most people. Some of the common purple magic item and metal eaters were transported to New Phyrexia, the planet Mirrodin, they call it, a planet of living metal, where they grew to enormous size and became alpha predator quadrupeds standing 15 feet high at the shoulder, looking like ancient megafauna called titanotheres, but with that characteristic rounded head and massive jaw. 
Those creatures became known as megagogs. They are large enough to swallow a person whole, which is just as well considering their teeth and parts of their anatomy are made of solid metal. Not uncommon on Mirrodin. Dominaria's forests are home to the Forotogs. They are tricky creatures, blindingly fast on their feet or leaping through the canopy. They're hard to miss just from the trail of devoured trees in their wake. They can eat so fast it's like a bunch of wood chippers just went crazy. And if they were not for the fact that there is only so much mass they can digest at a time, the forests of Dominaria would be completely gone. Forotogs have light blue scales, large green eyes and spiky barbels extending from their chins and the tops of their heads like a spine crest. Also found on that supercontinent uh, named Jamura and the lands of Urborg and Eorona is the Necrotog. Not too dangerous, they are diseased and nasty little ghouls who dig up and consume any corpse they can find. Their emaciated bodies look a lot like a corpse with green grey skin and a sticky milky ooze which coats their red eyes. Also found on Jamura are the mysterious three-toed, blue-skinned and more salamander looking Chronotogs which have large white eyes and somehow feed on time, but not much more than that is known about them. The continent of Otaria is east of Jamura, south of Shiv and west of Terrasier, and it has its own diverse population of atogs, which are a more adaptable set of subspecies with a wider tolerance for more diverse diets. Feeding takes longer for them though because they don't have such concentrated food sources, but they tend to be more deliberate and dare I say intelligent for atog standards even using primitive tools and making personal crude jewellery, even if it is just body parts and shiny objects. Among the Otarian Atogs are the Psychotogs, which feed mostly on rotten or decaying flesh, but are opportunistic feeders on psychic energy. They are grey-green like the Necrotog, but have a larger, much more bulbous head, and they don't live together, so they're not that hard to tell apart. The Phanatog is a swift, large, blue humanoid tree frog type, a bit like the chronotogs, except they eat magic fields. So any enchantments are just a quick snack for them. They can be very annoying if you rely on magical enchantments for anything. The sarcotog sometimes consumes decomposing flesh to survive, but will prefer to feed on artifacts as well. Sacrotogs have brightly green skin and resemble a cross between a frog and a goblin. Then we have the lithotogs, which eat artifacts and actually eat the surrounding countryside. They eat rocks, trees, grass, dirt, you know, litho, that's dirt. Everything in their path until they are too full to eat is basically in danger. Lithotogs are blue skinned and humanoid with red and green eyes. They have huge teeth which barely fit their jaw and they also grow spikes on their head. There's also another land consuming type called the Thaumatog, which is smaller, purple skinned and very reptilian with scales and a short snout and they eat magic. And finally on Otaria, they have the mythical Atog Atog, the so-called lord of their species, but probably some sort of mutant that developed the ability to feed on other Atogs and grew very powerful as a result. On other planes, they could be found on the planet Wrath. This is where you find the Auratog, a shriveled and pink version of their breed, with the moor and the orange eyes. They feed exclusively on magic energy and any enchantments that they find. I can't tell you much about their reproduction or anything else, other than they being sporadic and related to how much food they have available. They must grow rapidly, though, as you never see any juveniles around. Perhaps they hatch from eggs. They, I've made a 5th edition stat block and put it in the video description text for you. As always, thanks for joining me, and I will be back with more lore for you very soon. Might not be Magic the Gathering lore, probably some D&D lore. I'll see you then.